The trouble with crime is it's getting too easy. Is it? Yes. So absurdly easy, I am thinking of giving it up. Well, there's no risk in it anymore. There's no danger. You mean you want to live with a policeman's hand hovering over your shoulder? Yes. Well, I don't. Or at least with his beery breath hot on my neck. Well, I should have thought you felt that a few times recently. Never. Not even lukewarm, because the whole thing is becoming too bally easy. Burglary used to be a skilled trade requiring a high degree of expertise and experience, but now windows standing conveniently open, doors unlocked, jewels lying enticingly, ready to hand, simply begging to be burgled. Well, there's no credit in burgling them. But there's money. You mercenary beast, you burgle for money. So do you. Only when I need it, and other times I burgle for pleasure. But where is the pleasure? In taking sweets. From children. That is, in effect, what we are asked to do. Asked to do? Certainly. London is full of houses positively asking to be burgled. Haven't you ha noticed that half the houses in Kensington, of the kind that we would bother with, are built with indentations in the brickwork at regular intervals? It's just like a stepladder for a chap who knows how to climb, with lintels to catch hold of, balconies to swing up to. Do I gather you've been walking around Kensington? Yes. And so shall you. This very evening. Evening, Constable. Good evening, sir. Do you know him? I'm always polite to the police. I'm grateful to them. They're part of my risk. What's the other part? The other part is the owners. I would no more dream of robbing an unoccupied house than I would... Than you would what? Think of a comparison for me, Bunny. Well, I have a look at the occupiers of this house to see if they will do. Will do for what? The other part of my risk. Stay there and watch. Good evening again, sir. Oh, good evening. Are you waiting for somebody, sir? No. No. 
In that case, you'd have no objections to moving on, sir, would you? No. Of course not. No objection at all. What else was there to do? What else? After you... But it was you. You, you were a married woman. But that matters so much. It did. It does to me. How is Paulton? Same as he was then. Ah. He's downstairs. I've just had dinner with him. He'll be here in a moment. Then perhaps I had better go. Yes. I must leave you... these... My apologies. Did you want so much to have something that was mine? I did not know that these things were yours or that this was your house. You chose this house out of millions of others? Yes. How strange. Not strange. My heart made the choice. It was my heart that led you here. I must go. How? The way I came, by your balcony. No. I have become an accomplished burglar. But you might break your neck. No, wait until Porton comes. I should prefer not to meet him. Then hide behind these curtains. I will think of a reason for sending him away, and then you can leave like a normal person by the front door. I don't often do things like a normal person. Hide. Porton will be here. As you come out. Yes. my wrap from my bedroom. It's not very warm in here, my cashmere wrap. Oh, it is not warm. I'll close the window. No, just fetch my wrap.
Thank you again. Goodbye. Wait a moment. Where are you to be found? A thieves' kitchen in Seven Dials. But... This? Yes. Stolen down the Thames Valley beat the night before last. Have you really sunk so low? As low as they dig. I can't believe it. It just happened to be my size, otherwise I wouldn't have dreamed. My poor Arthur. How can I ask you to understand? What can I do to make it up to you? Don't worry. I'll be all right. Heaven bless you. Goodbye. No. I must go, your husband. interrupt your playing. No, I've played enough. You're right. It is cold. You can shut the windows. Certainly. What are you doing? Ringing for Pelham. Why? It's a servant's job to close the windows. I am not quite the servant. Your manners are not good enough for you to find employment as a servant. Only good enough for me to find employment as a husband? Temporary employment. I tell you, she is not a woman to argue with. So when she jumped to the conclusion that I had turned to a life of crime because of a broken heart, why? I didn't attempt to deny it. It is useless to deny things when a woman knows better. But she really is an old friend. Married woman. So I gathered. She always was. It's a trouble. Makes all the difference in the world. And her husband is? Hmm? 14th Earl of Porton. The clown. She married him for his title, I suppose. He married her for her money. Is she rich? One of the richest women in England. In the world, perhaps. <laughs> that makes it worse. How? One can't be in love with her because she's married. It's not the decent thing. One can't be in love with her because she's rich. People would misunderstand. But otherwise... Otherwise... One would very much like to be in love with her. But things are not otherwise. I broke with her eight or nine years ago and I shall stay broke. Your telephone. Answer it for me, would you, Bunny? Whoever it is, I'm not feeling conversation. Hello? Hello? Who is that? Hello? Mr. Raffles' rooms, who is that? Speaking, please. Nobody there? No voice at all. Nothing. Funny. Practical joker. Funny, but not particularly amusing. You, you don't think... I don't think it's the police playing games. I think there's a chance it might be her. Really? I regret to say I am in the London telephone directory by your persuasion, buddy. Oh. You said it was the modern thing to do. Oh, did I? The 20th century thing to do. Yeah, well, so it is. Well, I wanted to stay in the privacy of the 19th century for as long as possible. And you haven't got long left. Who's that? Her? Already? Not possible. I hope. Might be the second post. He knocks and knocks again. Not the second post. Would you go, please, man? What am I to say? If it's the lady, you will have to let her in. Oh, 
Um, is Rappel down? Uh, hey, come back. Hello, Rappel. Hello, Paulton. Sorry, Raffles, I couldn't. That's all right. Lord Paulton is welcome here, providing he comes as a friend. Indeed, I do. Then, indeed, you are welcome. Can I have your drink? Scotch whiskey? Kind of you. Not at all. First, I would like to be sure that you are going to do what I ask you to do. What's that? Raffles, I saw you leaving my house last night. Did you? Going down the staircase and opening the front door. Really? So I must ask you what? to be so good as to leave my wife alone. Just that? Not to visit her, not to see her, not to speak to her. As far as she is concerned, to disappear. Oh. We have lived abroad for the past three or four years. I suppose we shall go abroad again soon. I would like to think that our stay in England is to be uninterrupted by you. I understand your point of view. <laughs> Raffles, you're a decent fellow. You always were. So don't crab my game. What game? You know what it is as well as I do. Gloria's got money, and I've got it too, as long as I married her. So don't muck it up, that's all. I'll make it worth your while. That's the stuff. I knew you were the right sort. You haven't changed. How much is it worth to you? Make me an offer. I'll give you 300 a year, so long as I'm safely married to Gloria. By safely, I mean with the same spending power that I have at the moment. Not enough. 400. Five. No, not five. And if she leaves you, what have you left? A ruined castle and an overdraft at the bank? All right, then. Five. But for five, you don't even stay in the same country as her. Take her abroad. I'll stay in England. And she decides where we go. And I decide where I go. But for 500, I will promise not to visit her, not to see her, not to speak to her. Is it a bargain? A bargain. Will you have that drink now? Thank you. One of you? No, thanks. Not too early. Oh, I'm sorry. I, d I don't believe you know. Lord Paulton, funny man, this. How do you do? How do you do? Soda? Straight. To our bargain. Our bargain. And do I ever catch you not leaving her alone? Well, I have friends in the police. What does that mean? You wouldn't be able to see her from inside Wormwood Scrubs. And why on earth should I be inside Wormwood Scrubs? Oh, one reason or another. You always wear a poisonous swine. Utter your threat straight out or shut up and go. I'll go. Good. Bunny, see the noble lord to the door, would you, and kick him down the stairs? Whatever you say. When should I expect the first check? At the end of this week. I look forward to it. Good night. Did you kick him downstairs? Couldn't. He was too far ahead of me. Pity. I agree. He's a rotter. Putting it mildly. Raffles, you're not really going to take the money. Why not? Well, I mean... Well, how shall I put it? As clearly as you can. Well, to take money from a fellow like that, to give up a woman you love, a decent chap doesn't do such things, and you know he doesn't. You're an expert on decent chaps, eh, buddy? Well, one knows how to behave. Tell me. If I can. But you know these things. Does a decent chap make love?
to a married woman? No. You sure? Absolutely. And if this decent chap happens to fall in love with a married woman, which could happen to anyone, does he put you visiting her, seeing her, speaking to her? Does he cut off all relations with her? Yes, yes, I say I've done so. that. What? I have been your decent chap to the life. Yes, but, but taking the money... Oh, you mean the money is not decent? No, no, I don't. Or we don't need it, because we do. Or that it's wrong to accept money for what you were going to do anyway, or what? All right, I give in. Five hundred a year, Bunny. It will provide a solid basis for our lives. It will buy the whiskey and Sullivan's and the dinners at the Café Royal. All right, all right. There's no arguing with you. Such as the dinner we are going to have tonight to celebrate our great good fortune. Good evening, Mr. Beckles. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Beckett. I hope I find you well. Oh, very well, sir. So are we, I am happy to say. We are very, very well. Wouldn't you say, Bunny? <laughs> Never been weller. Yes, indeed. Good night, sir. Extraordinary what the thought of 500 a year for doing nothing at all does for your general health and spirits. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Uh, Mr. Beckles, uh, there's someone up in your room, sir. What? A, a lady, sir. I let her in with me Pasky. Uh, she said she was uh, an old friend of yours. An old flame? A very beautiful lady, sir. Raffles, do you think we've been celebrating prematurely? So this is your thieves' kitchen? I s certainly have had better quarters in my time, but that's no reason to call these by absurd names in front of my friend. You may send your friend about his business. Uh, sorry, buddy. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I understand. Good night, Raffles. Good night. You were not difficult to find, despite your silly story about living in seven dials. And now that you have found me? I'm going abroad again soon. Oh. And I'm taking you with me. Oh. I'm not going to lose you again. Forgive me. What are you going to do with your husband? Do nothing. What is he going to do with himself? Whatever he pleases. Work for his living if he wants to. You intend to leave him? And spend my life making up to you for having ruined your life. Uh, but isn't that a bit unfair? For having driven you to crime. You'd be ruining Porton's life too. I'll make him a small allowance. Enough to live on. If not to live as he does at present. He is used to living well. Then he'll have to get used to something else. Unkind. I can be kind only to one person. Gloria. Running away with me? Going away, we will not run. Going away, then, don't you think... Are you going to tell me that society will cast me out? It will, undoubtedly. I can do without society better than society can do without me. I'm sure you can, but... We will live abroad. Paris, Vienna, St. Petersburg. I have many friends. But would you be received? I shall be received because I'm rich. And you will be received because you're my consort. Your... consort? My husband. As soon as I can get Charles to divorce me. In the meantime, a fig for the conventions. Well, yes, of course, but never... Let's go home. Home? Uh, yes, you must. To tell Charles what I'm going to do and that you agree with me. You are going to tell Charles? Of course. Do you think this is an elopement? No. We'll go in a perfectly normal fashion, like a honeymoon couple in a week or so, with everything prepared. Have you anything to arrange? You haven't got any career or anything. It's just your wretched burgling and you won't have to do that anymore. Uh, no, I've nothing to write. I thought so. So it's only me. It'll take me a week or ten days and then we'll go. Well. I thought Paris, first of all, to buy clothes. For you? Of course, for me. <laughs> oh, darling, it'll be so wonderful. I'll make it up to you for everything. Mm. 
Mr. McKenzie, sir. Ah, how do you do? So glad you could come. Lord Bolton, delighted to make your acquaintance. Mr. McKenzie? Uh, for your butler's benefit. I am, in fact, an inspector. I thought you were. Do sit down. Thank you, sir. Now, the reason I have asked you to come here... Is the matter of uh, Mr. Raffles. I gather you are almost as anxious about him as I am. Almost. Perhaps as anxious? It is the dream of my life to put Mr. Raffles behind bars, my lord. So, we come to the naked truth of it. It's obvious you love her. No, I don't. What? She terrifies me. She fascinates me as a snake does a rabbit. She hypnotizes me. She's a fascinating woman. She's not a woman. I deny it. She has the willpower of any ten men I ever knew. And, I don't mind telling you, I fear her more than any other person on God's earth. And you're going to run away with her? With her? From her? If I can run fast enough. Well, you'd really run away from a woman who is beautiful and rich yes. and who loves you? She would drag me round the courts of Europe as her consort, as her common-law husband, as her irregular, bar-sinister, slightly shameful second-in-command. No, thank you. Do you mean you'd rather stay here? I love it here. I love my life here with the burglings and the flirtations and the sticky wickets at Lord's and the dinners at the Cafe Royal. I wouldn't give them up for any woman and certainly not for the kind of support. Oh, I'm glad because I love it too. So, the question is, how do we get the Countess of Porton to decide to give me up? Ah. As a hopeless case, perhaps? Gone too far? Irretrievable? Huh? I am so steeped in crime. Stealing has become more than a habit to me. It is second nature to me now. I can't give it up. I must do it like drug taking. There is no cure. It might work. It's a mania. And no matter how much she tells me not to, I steal from her. Do you think it'll work? It is my considered opinion, my lord, and I have considered it deeply, that the only way to catch him is to tempt him like a fisherman tempts a fish. To tempt him and to tickle him. With what do you suggest? He is particularly partial to diamonds, my lord. <laughs> A week today. A week today. I drink to it. Skippy, <laughs> please. Unimaginable bliss. Oh, Lady Paul. Yes. What marvelous diamonds you're wearing. You think so? Oh, yes, indeed. I do admire them. Do you? Yes, that's also true. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good night, Mr. Raffles, sir. Good night. Good night, Mr. Manders. Oh, oh, just a moment. Didn't I have a cane? No, sir. No canes. I'm jolly sure I did. Where is it? Uh, just one moment, sir. Uh, Bowman. I've just remembered I didn't bring it with me after all. Oh, that would account for it not being here. Yes. Was Mr. Raffles gone, sir? Yes. Yes. Good, Good night. night.
got you, have I? Have you? Mr. Raffles, I'm delighted to say that I arrest you. What for? For the theft of Lady Bolton's diamonds. Not true. I saw you take them. I have no diamonds, search me. Where are they, then? As a matter of fact, I was just putting them in the drawer to be safe. Very well, I arrest you for breaking and entering. Lord Paulton's house? Yes. Hello, what's going on in here? Raffles, what the devil does this mean? I was invited here to dinner as Lord Paulton can testify, and if not, I have lots of other witnesses. I may possibly have stayed a little late, but I can hardly be said to have broken and entered. You were invited to dinner, were you? Then I arrest you for loitering on these premises with intent to commit an unlawful offence. Unlawful? What are you doing in Lady Paulton's bedroom? Mr. Raffles is in my bedroom at my invitation because he is my lover. And what is that to you? Afternoon, Mr. Van Oh, uh, were well, you wanted... Yes, uh, of course. No good going up there if you ask me. Oh, why not? She's there. Oh. Oh, well, I might just look in. Oh, on your own head, be it, sir. Yes, of course. Don't say I didn't warn you. Yes? Oh, hello. Do you remember me? My name's Manders. I came to dinner at your house. What do you want? To see Raffles. Didn't you read the notice I put on the door? Yes, but... Uh... He's not to be seen. Well, why not? He's ill. Oh, well, he invited me to dinner at the Café Royal tonight. Well, I'm afraid you'll just have to go by yourself. Uh, is he really ill? Yesterday, it was just a feverish headache. Today, things have taken a turn for the worse. Well, can I go and see him, please, just for a moment? I am his oldest He's friend. He's not to be disturbed. Oh, um, well, ha have you got a doctor for him? Yes, of course I have a doctor. His name is Dr. Addison. He lives here in the Albany. Oh, Dr. Addison, I know him well. He's a jolly good chap. Yes, Raffles says he's... Yes, yes, he's one of the best. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me seeing Raffles, just for a moment. The doctor agrees with me. It would be better if he didn't see anyone. Oh, but I'm not anyone. I'm his closest friend. Excuse me, Lady Paulton. Excuse me. Hello, Dr. Edison. Uh, hello, Mendes. Well, Lady Paulton, I'm afraid it's rather more serious than I thought. Can I go and see him? I'm afraid it's starting to look very much as if it might be typhoid. What? Hmm. I'll get in a trained nurse. I can nurse him. Oh, no, Lady Poulton. I won't let anyone else nurse him. It's very brave of you, Lady Poulton, but I should prefer one of my own people, for the sake of the patient. Doctor, can I go and see him? Well, for literally not more than one minute. The patient is not strong. Thanks. Of course, I should be most grateful if you could continue to help with the nursing. I will. Hello, Raffles. It's me. Hello, Bunny. How are you feeling then? Huh? Not, not quite on the top of my form. You'll be all right again soon. Yeah. Huh? What a moment for fate. To choose to bowl me a leg break like this, eh? Yes. Yeah. Pitching plum on the middle stump and turning away, away into the slips. Oh. By the way, she, she, she doesn't know. I play cricket. What? And, and I never told her I was a cricketer. You didn't? Uh, it never seemed to come into the conversation. Yes, but still. She's got me in her clutches. Never mind. You'll be well again soon. Yes. Yeah. When I... When I am... Uh, going away... With her... To the German spot. Uh, 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 uh. Tiring. Been here long enough. Uh, no. 
You can go now. Raffles, do you want me to go? Please, go for me. Well, I'll call again tomorrow. No. No, please. Please don't, Bunny. Well, just to see how you are. She knows best. Well, I'll telephone twice a day. I've had the telephone disconnected. What? In order not to disturb him. She, she knows best. Oh. Goodbye, Rattles. Bye, Ronnie. Done it? Yes. Good night, then. Good night. Who's dead? What, don't you know? No. Oh, the quickest thing I've ever seen. Went off like a flash, he did. Who? Why, Mr. Raffles. Raffles. Here today, gone tomorrow. That's what I always say. And him such a real gentleman. Dr. Addison. Hello. Is it true? I'm afraid it's true. Raffles. Dead. It was typhoid, all right. There's a lot of it about. These damned local authorities won't look after their water supply. That's the trouble. But dead? Had a hemorrhage. Perforated his bowel, peritonitis. Fatal, usually is. Happened suddenly and we might have saved him. Terrible tragedy. England bowler, too. Was Lady Porton with him? Oh, no, thank God. First night off from nursing, she was fagged out. Though I suppose she'll think she would have saved him. But she wouldn't. Oh, nobody would. Can I go up and see him? No, he doesn't look very nice. Not like he used to. The last stages. Just to say goodbye. No, the undertakers now come to measure him for his coffin. They're used to it. I suppose. I wouldn't do it unless you're used to it. I'd like to say goodbye to him. Well, say goodbye to him when he's in his coffin. I told you it won't be too late. Wait for us. Right, God. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, O Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty. Holy and merciful Saviour, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy, to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, Christ, have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy upon us, Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all, evermore. I didn't mean to be late. The fool of a driver didn't know the way. Took the wrong turning. I'm sorry, Raffles. Addison says he wanted to be buried here. Wonder why. There's always a reason for everything he did. He chose the quietest place. He told no one. He didn't even want me to know he was dead. 
he slipped through her fingers. I go abroad tomorrow. Along. Goodbye, Lady Paul. Lost to the criminal life of England. Is that your epitaph for him? Would he have wanted any other? Yes. I think he'd have wanted his tombstone to say he beat you to the last. I doubt if he would have made any admissions, even on his tombstone. Well, anyway, you can't touch him now. Nope. We can only make do with second best. Well, goodbye for the moment, Mr. Mandos. I'll be seeing you. Uh, Manders, I'm going back with Inspector McKenzie. Would you care to come along with me in my capture? What? I don't want to make a scene in a churchyard, sir. Would you like to come quietly? Who would other you? My name won't be of any help to you, but you can guess where I come from when I tell you I have a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? Well, it would have been for the two of you, but one of you's been and got himself buried. That leaves only one. So we'll have to settle for one. Oh, no, 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 you won't need those. I won't make any trouble. Just don't want people to see. Oh, bless you, sir. It's only Inspector McKenzie and he knows all about it. Well, still. Just as you like, sir. Going. Where are you mind? I'm glad he escaped you. Don't care about myself. Lucky for you, you don't care. What's the charge? Oh, there's a dozen or more. Well, it doesn't matter. Raffles is in his grave. You think so? Two dozen second-hand books, that's what got buried in that coffin, you ask me. What do you mean? Do you mean he's alive? Of course he is. I thought alive? Oh, God, nothing has matters to make alive. I'm kicking. Oh! You didn't <laughs> really want to get rid of me, did you, buddy? You didn't want to get away from me, did you? <laughs> you get away, yes! <laughs> 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 well, you just tell that driver to go straight to the studio and then on to the Albany, and we'll give that porter the shock of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Raffles, you're not dead. No more than you are, Beckett. You're not dead. Well, it was fun going to my own funeral, but it wasn't much fun actually being buried, so I decided to pull myself together and come to life again. That must have been a surprise for him all, sir. There was a certain amount of surprise, but quite a number of people had left the place by then and missed that part of it, so they don't yet know that I'm alive again. I want to surprise them too, so if anyone should come inquiring for me, 
the story is still that I'm dead. All right? Oh, yes, sir. You're dead as a door now, sir. Thank you very much, sir. You just tell me when you want to stop being dead. I will. Oh, uh, can I ask? Yeah. Uh, does Dr. Addison know you're alive, sir? Oh, yes. He was there at my death. Well, I couldn't have died without him. So, Addison knew all about it, all the time. Yes. What a good chap he is. He did it for a lark, and to help me. He even gave me a concoction to drink to make me look deathly pale. The only difficulty was Lady Porton insisting on nursing me, but we managed to kill me off while she was at home resting for an hour. You fooled me and her. Well, it didn't hold much water medically, but fortunately just enough. And tomorrow the Portons go abroad. Are you sorry at all? She is the most wonderful woman in the world, Bunny. I could no more live with her than I could share a cave with a burr constrictor. Oh, that's a bit unkind. No, Bunny. She'd kill me in a month. She'd suffocate me with love. I need to be free, not have someone dictate my every action. Of course, I should have realised there was something wrong with the funeral. Wrong? Yes. What? That out-of-the-way churchyard, no one from the MCC there, and no obituaries in the newspapers. Lady Porton does not read the sporting news. She would not know or care if the whole England team suddenly died of the plague. Well, if that's the sort of woman she is, she deserves what she gets. She deserves better, and a better man than me. But at least I'm alive. Although we still have the same problem. What's that? We're broke. Well, the undertakers came rather high in the matter of bribes. We need cash. Funny. Am I? Or am I not? The cleverest cracksman alive. The cleverest cracksman dead? Exactly. You've hit it, Bunny. I am dead. And we are presented with an opportunity not to be missed. Chance of a lifetime? Yes, indeed. Bunny, what is the most difficult, the most outrageous, the most impossible crib to crack? You don't mean... The ultimate challenge, Bunny. The old lady... The very pinnacle of endeavour. Of Needle Street? I do. The Bank of England. Raffles. The risk. Ah, oh, but Bunny, the rewards. Just think of it. Loot beyond our wildest imaginings. And to cap it all, Inspector Mackenzie's face, he knows there is only one man alive in England who would dare to risk it. And I'm dead. It'll be worth it just for that. Are you on? I'm on. Good man. <laughs> then let us begin at the beginning. Now then, when you take on a job like this, it's no good being overawed by the sheer size of it. Mm -hmm. 